This is Annabelle Gaberti, and you are listening to Lawfully Creative, my podcast to talk with professionals in the creative industries, to hear their stories, what inspires their creation, what decisions change their careers, and what relationships influence their work. Today's episode is brought to you by Crefovi, our London and Paris based law firm focused on advising the creative industries. Subscribe to our podcast, Lawfully Creative, or catch up with our original shows on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Podcast, SoundCloud, Castbox, TuneIn, Breaker, Radio Public, Anchor, Pocket Casts, the American Bar Association Journal, Player FM, iHeartRadio, and Overcast. Please do leave a review and rating about our podcast to encourage others to discover our curated content. On the 30th of September 2018, I caught up with Isaac and um, Regina Manivitz, who are the founders of the custom jewelry brand Ben Amun. Ben Amun is located in the Garmin district of New York and uh, produces some exquisite custom jewelry and I am actually a customer of theirs. Every season, the Manevitz couple come to town, to Paris, to sell their wares. So we caught up at the Café Marly in the center of Paris, very close to where the Trenoy Fashion Trade Show is located, and we registered that podcast. Enjoy! Yes, yes let's start. Okay. So how did it all start, Ben Amun? It all started with the idea to create unusual jewelry. So I did start a Benamun company. How, di- how, how different was it? In what way was it different? Uh, to be in the term of uh, using different materials like plastic wood and create jewelry that are as art, art, art as art. jewelry, art to wear kind. Okay. And uh, so we were able to create that kind of fashion jewelry. Came like statement and color, and so the material was not so important. Is to accomplish the the result to accomplish what I wanted to create. And what was that more or less? Was it in New York, and was it uh, what in the eighties? Yeah, 80s, it was the... in New York in the beginning of the eighties. Yeah. In the eighties. Yeah, the early eighties. Okay. And before that, where were you, Isaac? Which uh... before that, I was uh, in Egypt. I, you mentioned Alessandria, right? You no, were in Cairo, no, Cairo. Cairo. You were in Cairo. Yeah, I'm born in Cairo. Okay. And Are you were born in Cairo? Yeah, I'm okay. born in Cairo, yes. And then you moved to New York, and that's where you decided to continue yeah. the jewelry business, but with this focus on art and also using some uh, different materials from what was being done at the time. Yes, instead of just uh, gold and diamond, different materials and make jewelry out of it. Wood, uh, plastic. Okay, you know, just to say that in this, in in all of Europe and Middle East at that time, the yeah. 60s, 70s, people used to do real jewelry mostly. Like it was gold jewelry, or real okay. jewelry. But the United States was always known for fashion or custom jewelry. They always were known. It's the company, like United States, had a history, had a tradition of doing fashion custom jewelry. They were like Rhode Island, Providence, they were the, okay. the capitals of fashion jewelry. So when Isaac arrived, he became fascinated with the idea that you could use, make jewelry not from gold. Like for him, it was only gold or nothing. But in the States, you discover a way, you know, people wear... Uh, you discover that when you arrived in the US. Did, and I, so it was a, a discovery. So not about, but even though they were making jewelry in the States not of precious metals, yes. For him, the, the novelty was that you could make jewelry without using precious metals. Uh-huh. But they were duplicating what the real jewelers used to do. So that was like the basically copies of real jewelry. So that's what everyone was doing. But when Isaac started his company, he didn't want to do what everyone is doing because copy the real jewelry might as well use gold. Right, right, right. 
so he was uh, was gold easily available uh, yeah, free available time, in uh, yeah in that time Egypt. was much yeah in Egypt yeah okay and in America also gold was also, cheap at that time ah okay yeah but now it became very expensive so so you set up a business like in the eighties in New York yes, yeah yeah okay time. did you do it all by yourself or you were all by, you had fam family members no or? all by myself okay were yeah. you married already yes you were married. Okay. But yeah, you were a teacher, oh, right, Regina, at the time? Well, I was doing, yeah, I was working other places, yes. I was working in, first I was working in research, then I went on to teach. Okay. Oh, yeah, first I was teaching, then I went to research, yeah. I don't like which one. <laughs> and then... Um, a long time ago. Long yeah. time ago. Then he, I, I took a leave of absence from my job for one year. I okay. asked her to help me. Yeah. And and then I he never let me go. go. Because basically it was becoming quite intense on the business standpoint and organizing and managing people. Yeah, and calling and following up while I was busy creating, so I need the other side of the business. Right, like and, the business side of yeah. things being done. Right, okay. Fantastic. And so the 80s, and it's been going on for 30, 30 years? 30 years, more, 35, 30, 35 years. years, yeah. Right. And going strong. And being always on on top of fashion, yeah, creating and being fashion. absolutely, yeah. So um, you come to uh, the trade shows and fashion trade shows Hanoi every season in March as well as in September. Just now you are in Paris for uh, to present your new collection. I also saw when I did some research on your brand that you have a lot of distribution channels um, in terms of being present on um, brick and mortar shops like um, in the US for example Nordstrom, um, in Europe I think you mentioned um, at some point Le Bon Marché etc. Right. You also have quite a lot of online uh, presence with um, net Porte and Pop Shop I think etc. Shop Pop, yeah. Shop Pop. Shop Shop Pop. Like, online we have Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom. Yeah. Blooming there's now Amazon.com. Yes, that's right. I also saw you were on some platform like Amazon and eBay. eBay is probably resale. Not it's that. resale. Okay, it's not yeah. true. Okay, I was wondering. Okay, and um, and you even on social media because you, as I was mentioning before when we met in, on the trade show, you have eight thousand, more than eight thousand followers on Instagram, and Instagram now you can buy from Instagram, right? Right. Go to our own website. Yeah, it goes to your website. Okay. Yeah. Right. And also you have or Facebook. sometimes we direct it to this. Like if it happens to be a, when we're promoting a product that's also sold on another website. Okay. We, we direct it to the website to help sales on that website to generate sales. We don't always you know, direct it to our own. Okay. okay. We try to be even. Really. That's very kind of you, and also kind I kind because I tell you why it's kind. I'm very kind. It's uh, it's a business decision because I do want a relationship with people like Amazon or Shopify, uh -huh. so I can't take away all the business from them. I see, I see. Well, yeah, but I mean, Bob Shop, for example, as is using Benamon as a Google ad, you know, and that's an ad word, and this is why it's at the very top. So you let them do this. So that's also that's also quite well. It works. You know, business decision. It's good. It's good yeah. for us. They okay. didn't ask to be honest with you. They do what they want. Yeah. They don't ask. But uh, interesting. It's not a bad. Like if it was, if I if I discovered it was hurting my brand, yeah. then I would have stopped it. I that's guess. exactly what I did a few day, yeah. days ago. Yeah, when I noticed that. Uh, a non site a, 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 a website for for legal services was using my first name and my uh, last name to actually create an AdWord and drive the traffic to the to their website. Oh, I was like, no that's way. Very bad. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah. you, you for you it's like a partnership. So it's but good we that came, you. we came, we were only doing in the United States yeah. at first, but business have changed in the United States. So we decided to expand our business by coming to Europe and opening the market in Europe. Right. And we were very happy and successful to do that because in Europe we were, uh, they discovered us again uh -huh. one more time. And we opened the business throughout the world, through Japan, China, Russia, and uh, all the Middle East. Yeah. So it was a very good idea to expand our business outside the United States. Indeed, and through these different channels of uh, distribution distribution channels that you have, is that is that the best strategy for your brand in terms of developing itself, having a mix of distribution channels for online, brick and mortar, 
yeah. uh, platform, social yeah, media. Yeah, that's an additional to the business. Yeah. Okay. But no, originally, you can just come on okay, not the, just on this one. one. Yeah. I mean, how many brick and mortar you have? I mean, like yeah. 10 in a state? Yeah, and, one and uh, right. opening the market and coming to Paris give us a good exposure internationally. Even, even to the Asian markets and yes, obviously to yes, the European to ones, all yeah, the buyers are coming. Asian, European, Asian not and the European. European. I'm sorry? How is the draw for all outside markets? So you're saying it's, 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 Paris Asian, is even better Middle for East, the... Uh, Asian, European, wow. Asian, uh, Middle East, okay. uh, Far East, Russia not so much right now, but mm -hmm. used to be. Okay. Used to be very strong. But the European oh. market is not uh, not that important. In Paris. I see. I see. It's European like market is really like very small. small for for, for the for Benamon in Paris. What What are your main um, territories in Europe? Uh, um, would you say? Uh, no, I don't really, know. Really very small percentage of the business. So you come into Paris on the fashion trade show, but not so much to sell in Europe. It's more to sell to uh, Middle East, Asia, yeah, and Far East. And and Far East. Wow. Because the people from all over the world, they come they to come Paris here. during Fashion Week. Yeah. And it was a chance to have an exposure and introduce our brand to right. them. Yeah. So re really, Paris is the international platform it's for the international trade, right. fashion trade, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not for Europe. For some yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Europe almost prefers to come to the States. Sorry, yeah. European countries come to the to the states yeah, to, to buy from. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but it's interesting that, for example, nobody would go like you. You told me once you would never go to London. It doesn't make any sense to go to London Fashion Week or no, Berlin yeah. Fashion Paris, Week. Like it is Paris. Paris That's where all the buyers period, come. Yeah, yeah the, everybody come to Paris. People recognize because first of all, our brand is produced in the United States. Right, and, and that's a very big plus. Is it? Uh, yeah, because we are able to control the, the product and ensure the quality. And when we came to Europe, uh, the people uh, recognized the quality and the, and they appreciate the the detail of the product. Yes, so that's, that's why sure. we are able to. And and it's made in USA. That's a very big plus. Is it? A very big plus. Some of my clients who are very successful, like you are, are actually suffering from um, um, basically counterfeits like fake fake products, which are being manufactured in China, and then which are basically uh, you know uh, uh, being uh, shipped all over Europe and also sell, sold on platforms, etc. And so I was wondering whether you also experienced this issue of having lots of. Um, Benamun fake products flooding the markets. No, uh, like for, fortunately, the Benamun product is such a fashion item mm -hmm. on a high, high, high standard of of design yeah. that is not for mass for mass. Uh, not it's not yeah. a mass uh, consumption. Premium. It's for it's very premium, uh, premium product, and the people who knock they knock for mass production mass uh, appeal mm -hmm. but ours is about for the upper end for the fashion people appreciate fashion and quality but so. that is the problem because what they're doing with um, a chinese counterfeiters to, to my clients is that they're taking the pictures of my client okay of her in, in this case it's top toys and they say that it, they made it on this platforms like uh -huh. wish.com or ebay or amazon and then instead of selling the real stuff they sell some fake, cheap, horrible products to the clients who have been buying them for twenty dollars a pop. When my client sells them like no. four or five no. times, yeah, well, four or five times more than this at least. And then they call my clients, these disgruntled customers, and they say, "What is this piece of shit that you've been sending me?" And <laughs> so my no, client, but, I but, never sold it to you. It's but, not coming it from us. It happens to us too. Amazon.com Amazon. Amazon. has uh, people who. Buy the jewel, they buy one piece and they put in a knock it off and they resell it for less okay. than I could even produce. On it. the second, all right, okay, on the second. And market. you know, when we catch it on the, on the platform on Amazon, yeah. especially on Amazon, then we complain to the, to the company. Amazon, to Amazon, Amazon, and they Amazon remove the, they take them down. Yeah. Take them so down. you send them take down notices, yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah. what Isaac was saying, going back to this, that our product is. Doesn't appeal to everyone. It takes a special person to like. It's not to be snobby, but people who buy a lot, they would. It's our product is not 
mass. Uh, yeah, mass it doesn't appeal to everyone. It's right. Not, it's not beautiful to them. It take, okay. Because the one who knocks off a piece of jewelry, he needs to sell hundreds of them. And nothing of my piece, a Benamon piece, is not going to sell hundreds of them. He knows this. So it's too expensive for him to, like, to invest. He doesn't higher. invest in Benamon. I see what you mean. So in a way, you lack in a way. But oh, okay, yes, they so do. What you are saying is that it's also quite difficult. The handicraft, like making it, is difficult. So right. having some fakes being made in China is not that easy. It no. requires a lot of savoir faire and know how. Yeah, fair, fair enough. Fair, fair enough. They know. They can, yeah. Chinese, those who not, or Chinese or any kind of, they can, they can do anything. Uh, right, right, yeah. They can duplicate the yeah. look if they want to. But it's just too expensive, doesn't pay for okay, that. Because okay. they cannot sell enough of it. I see what you they mean. They only duplicate a lot of things when they the know that they can. They also market it. They also study the market. Okay. They figure out, so my market doesn't but, you know, this but earring. Also, How many women will buy in China this year, even for a dollar? Became, we became a brand also. Well, the, buy, the customers in, uh, are usually in Europe. To my clients, who are suffering from all these um, things that I was talking to you about. And we're lucky, we became a brand to the persistence of the producing in the United States mm -hmm. and the design concept that uh, the Chinese now, the success, the, I mean, the rich or the companies, they want to buy not knockoff too. Of course. Of yeah, course, so yes, therefore yes. we were able to create a the brand. The one who naps, his wife wants to buy the real Benamoon. <laughs> who? The <laughs> man who naps off Benamoon. His oh, yeah, wife yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. want to wear a knockoff, she wants to she buy wants the real Benamoon. <laughs> <laughs> so in, on this note actually, um, I remember your, your son Ben, um, and he um, um, gave you some advice to negotiate some deal in China a few years ago. So what was that about? And well that was actually, it how, was... Um, how's that working? All right. The deal was, you know, to control that Chinese market. Actually, <laughs> we wanted to have a source of that particular person, and it was our first entry into the Who market. Who is he? Sorry, his name was Bud B U D B Y. Like a Chinese partner, or a Chinese yeah. partner. And he owned. He wanted to own, like he basically was going to buy Benamon products and uh, create shops, shops in the malls at that time. Right. And he built three beautiful shops. Did he? And we designed, you know, we offered design and architectural design came from us. We approved all the designs, approved all the display. Okay. He did build three beautiful shops and he was going to purchase goods from Benamon to resell it as yeah. Benamon with the name of the store Benamon. To build a brand. Whereabouts in which town? Chindown. Chindown. of Chindown. Okay. Is, that, is that the region or is that the region town? of China? It's okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's a beautiful. It's a southern part of China. Why not China or Beijing? Because he was, was based there. This person. Okay. And actually, it's a very touristy area. Okay. Very high end. And like it's a very very. And it's a very I very see. big area. It's a huge area. I mean, everything in China is big, but this is even bigger and big. And so, so he where, built the three stores, and he yeah. uh, it lasted. The relationship lasted about a year. Oh really? <laughs> so this is over. It's over, yes. Okay. And he, did he ever buy some stock from you? Yes, he bought to sell. He bought and sold as per agreement. We, my son then was a very good contract. Yeah. And he had a minimum to buy, so he purchased the minimum per year, the first year, and he was supposed to like increase each year. Mm -hmm. But either he was a very wealthy Chinese and. He was just either got bored with the project or it didn't pay for him or something, he just gave up. He also, I think, he got very sick. Okay, okay. He got sick and gave so, so okay. anything. Else. But that's so that really opened the market, for right? Yeah. yeah, so he could have opened the market, but he did open the market. Well, that's uh, yeah, very, very it's difficult at uh, the end of the day. It's very difficult to work with yeah. people you don't understand. I mean, okay. Culturally speaking, yeah. uh, but he spoke fluent so English. He was educated in England, so he knew the Western culture. This yeah, particular young man yeah. was a young man, thirty. Yeah, a very come from extremely wealthy family. His family was part of. Uh, yeah, but I think should have, perhaps a businessman was a bit. I mean, I think I would have opened the first jobs in Beijing and Shanghai. Really, um, I think it was not a bad decision to do in Qingdao because it's a smaller town, and you want. I think you want to build the name. You have less competition than like smaller fish of fun. Right. You know, okay, so in Beijing you had Louis Vuitton, uh, Michael Kors, so we well, no, Frankly, I, nobody wants to buy Louis Vuitton anymore. <laughs> no, 
That's why we're doing all these collaborations with Supreme. China is not an easy market, but for you at least in terms of the countries yeah. coming yeah. from China, this yeah. is not something you feel. Oh, too maybe we just by. don't know. No, 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 usually they come up. They come up on eBay, they come up on Amazon. You would know, especially if you're original. I know you're a university really profit business. How are you seeing, so since you have all these distribution channels and I see that you have this great mix, you know, you're not putting all your eggs in the same basket, you've got a portfolio of distribution channels, which is really a smart way to manage a business because then it means you've got several income streams coming from several, you know, distribution channels, several territories. So that's great. That's very smart. How to hedge your risk. Your risk. But coming to the um, brick and mortar retailers and stockists, etc., how are you seeing their future, especially in the US, like the malls of this world, the big department stores, a la Nordstrom? Do you think they have a bright future ahead of them, or they're going to be gulfed in by the Amazon of this world? I mean, well, I hope not, but I think they're not doing enough to hold on. Especially okay. stores like Nordstrom or Bloomingdale's, they, they flood, their, flood their staff with really cheap and made in China, very inexpensive uh, really? goods. Wow. They don't have, they don't stay, they don't stick to the luxury. Okay, luxury yeah. and like, um, and it's kind of when you walk into Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's or uh, Sears or even Saks. Oh, Sears, yeah, Macy's. Macy's. Sachs, Macy's, yeah. They all look they, the they same. All, I don't even know where I am. I think I'm the same store. I see, I see. Like the same brand, the same. Even they change the name, but they tend to change the name. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one is Jew, the other one will be Ur, or like it's just the same merchandise. Right. But Neiman Marcus for that's much more. That's much more. The positioning is much more high end. Yeah. And I think like Saks like store, Saks is on it. Uh, Saks is having trouble right now because they were bought out so many times to change hands, and they were bought by. Hudson Bay, which right. was a it's Canadian company. Yeah, but it was also mass market. It was like equivalent to Macy's or less. Oh, okay. Hudson Bay is not a luxury. A luxury. Yeah, I don't have the mentality. Yeah, I don't think we're Canadian. I'm really. It's not the whole brands. store, the whole, yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole conglomerate is okay. ma ma geared to mass market. Okay. And probably do a great job with the mass market because the people like so, Walmart. Or whatever they do a great job with their own clientele, but people like Berto, Barney, yeah. I think they're here to stay, okay. but they also need to, you know, they stay because they provide the customer service, they provide the visual aspect of any product, whether it's jewelry shoes, even though you can buy everything online, uh -huh. whether it's Benamoon or Louis Vuitton or Prada, okay, if you go to the store, you actually see the product, you can try on the pair of shoes, you can try on the pair of shoes, sure, sure, sure. So a woman I, still, I still buy my, my clothes in store because I don't yeah, want to, and the same thing with my shoes because I don't want to have to, you know, ship them back and stuff. Right. Do you know, it's okay, I could, I could do it online. But still, uh, people like, I mean, like to try on. Yeah, try on, and uh, when you buy an expensive item or like yeah, a luxurious sure. item for or sure. status item, yes. you want to make sure that it's in perfect condition, right. that it looks right, that it looks right I on agree. you, that you feel good. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I guess people do buy things. Because buying is an experience. It's an yes. experience where you enjoy it and you cherish the moment. Mm -hmm. It's a very special thing when you buy when something. When you go and buy a 5,000 Chanel bag, yes, if you have a lot of money, it's not a problem to buy online because younger people do that. Oh, 5,000 and Chanel, oh, I didn't like the shade of the red, so let me send the bag get another red. But it's, it becomes a problem right. for people who are not as used to the... Online shopping. Well, I think that also what happens now is people do a lot of research online before they step a uh, foot into a store, and yeah. literally when they are in the store, they already know what they want to buy, so to speak. So right, but they yeah. still want to feel it. Now, Correct. The, that's an example like the the net Yeah, yeah the, the whole mentality, the whole. How's that working reason. for you, net apporter? Is that working yeah. again? Yeah. Yes, but the reason to to open online was to really take away business from people like. Saks or even Marcos or Bergdorf or Bobby Right. Bergdorf. They really and end. they deliver in one day, like on the same, they've got like same same day delivery right. or something. But it's crazy. Very, it, it wasn't like this. First, they were just you would click and you buy it and they ship it and you can exchange. They provide some sort of service, but the service wasn't there. But they realized that the customer who buys. For which one, sorry? Metaporte, they realized okay. that just selling online is you still need to provide service. Oh, for sure. So, they now have in-house salespeople who go to your house right. and you buy a lot and they bring you a, 
product to try things on. Seriously? Yes. yes. If you buy but it, you have to buy service. it. They deliver the same day. They set up points all over the world, like one in LA, one in New York, I major, see. where there is a sort of showroom. I see. That you can go and see. So they also invest in brick and mortar so that people it's can not, it's not brick and, and collect. It, but for those who buy online, they can go and see what they buy. That's right. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, yeah. It's, wow. it's a mix. So they're only online. It works for Amazon and yeah. for cleaning. No, Amazon is also uh, opening some shops, like some brick and mortar shops as well, yeah. to a degree. So yeah. made, but, you know, if you buy like, uh, you know, Cleaning detergent that you can no, buy, course, yeah. you can't think so away. Well, okay, yeah. even this I order on Amazon one time some tight, you know, to do my laundry, and the box seems so big that oh, good, very cheap. It's a big box, I write the little box. The opposite happened to me. I, I bought for 12 quid some uh, some vinegar because my, my ah. cleaner wanted me to buy some white vinegar. So, okay, okay. but when we delivered <laughs> it, it was like six packs of massive white vinegar, all, only for 12 quid. Like fifteen yeah, bucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I, have to you can it. I want to change. I, I think that <laughs> yeah, yeah. you must. The, the box was this <laughs> much. I said, "What the heck?" I showed it to my kids. Said, "Why did you buy so many white vinegar?" I said, "Well, it was such a good bag, and I had no idea they would deliver like on the table." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it can go work both both ways. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. So so I mean, yeah, they're not doing enough, but they're here to stay. But they're not doing enough, and the competition is real, fierce with the uh, e-tailers, which are themselves even opening some brick and mortar point for stand points for click and collect and also for showrooms. Maybe we can go back to the creative side a little bit, Isaac, and I'd like you to kindly explain what are the aesthetics of your brand. You mentioned before that you were uh, quite daring in your choices of material with the plastic, the wood. Yeah, the main thing in the to make jewelry, you have to give the customer for what they pay. Give them in style, in fashion, and in uh, quality and lasting product mm -hmm. and using good material and the total become a special piece that you can wear it again and again and again right. and that's what the value comes from not not throw away jewelry not one time it's like you can hand it in even after for years you can give it as a gift to your children right and it become like a piece to enjoy and jewelry it's something you wear it because it makes you happy, makes sure. you feel good. Feminine. Feminine, yeah. makes you feel good and it adds to your to your wardrobe, it adds to your uh, old demeanor and you feel good about yourself. But for example, you, you make some pieces which are very interesting, uh, which Regina uh, is She's wearing, wearing a specimen at the moment, which are made of uh, gold coins. Yeah, um, coin, collected coin, like the old right. coin that you put together to wear it as a, a traveling uh, momentum. Right. So, for example, um, when you when you create such original pieces, do you have a particular um, um, sort of clientele in mind, like more Middle East or more European or more Asian or more American? Surely the taste must be must not, be s not really like different. somebody in uh, in mind exactly, but. Uh, it's, my, it's the Benamun DNA and the way okay. I feel about things. And people started to respond to what I like and what I feel. Yeah. I having like a follow up of my taste, of my uh, static of doing things. And I always like feel what the fashion is. I have That's a good. sixth sense that to How do you develop that, that sixth sense to understand what's good? It, comes, it comes like with time and it comes with experience. And it comes as something natural to have as a, as a designer, as an artist. You feel something and but you... But do you watch, for example, a lot of catwalk shows or every season? Or do you read a lot of magazines? Or do you go online a lot to look at Instagram accounts? Not really, or... no. I like like uh, art books. I look at a lot okay. of art books. And uh, then something must trigger me or or catch my eye. So you collect a lot of art books? Yeah, a lot. Okay. Where do you go in uh, in New York? Do you go into particular bookshops in New York? Yeah, I always buy in bookshop and I buy on Amazon a lot of books. Oh, you buy on Amazon? A lot of books, okay. yeah. Okay. That's cool. And from all the designers, so I have like a good history of what's going I on. I see, and, I see. Yeah, but then that's, I... That's, enjoy... right, that's quite timeless because fashion is more... Uh, 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 how can I say, it's, it's more fleeting. While what you are referring to, like, you know, having all these 
uh, this, this library of art books and which are there and are basically constituting the sort of groundwork for, for inspiring. But yeah. Then you use the inspiration and you create jewelry for the moment of today. Okay. And okay. that's what makes it fashion. I don't create a awesome. replica of antique. It's like a feeling, a mood, a color, uh, a length of earrings. Uh, that's what makes it fashionable. Is uh, for example, I thought. Did you remember the first, probably first pair of earrings that I bought from you? It's this lo lovely thing you say, cabochon. You know, very uh, French, but then um, so with a little. You see the the, the profile of an, uh, a lady from the 18th cameo. century. Cameo, ah, that cameo. Was that's cameo, right. Yeah. But then all the little um, the right sort of the rocks on the side are super yeah. funky with like funky colors. And yeah, even the colors uh, are quite modern. So, so yeah. I like this re reinterpretation of a cameo, which is a very French and yeah. fantastical process into something which is very much in the air of the times. So, yeah, it's yeah. take something from the old time and make it new for today. Right. And that's what's very important, what a good designer can do. Yeah. It's yeah. not to do something that looks old, but it looks relevant to the moment. Exactly, it's relevant yeah. to the moment. But yeah. also it is based on uh, old, 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 and uh, and time is material uh, from the old time also, yeah. and to create it to make it for the new moment, it's very exciting. And so, um, in terms of so, since you said that Paris was where really you would see all the buyers, um, be it from Asia, from a little bit from Europe, Middle East, the Far East. What do you mean by Far East, by the way? Is that uh, China? Oh, okay, uh, sorry. Yes, yeah, so Japan. Japan. Yeah. South yeah, Korea, Japan, Singapore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we do that. And so, would you would you say that there are some differences in aesthetics? Like, in you 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 have very broad a very broad range of products, obviously, yeah, which is a great yeah, idea. Yeah. But then, do you see, for example, um, you know, certain uh, countries or or territories liking more the diamond stuff or the silver stuff, the gold stuff, or like the gold, gold coins? Where where did you sell, for example, no, the gold at coins? At one time, uh, uh, each country had its own, like the Middle East, with like gold and hanging okay. earring with. Uh, and, uh, what do you mean by hanging earrings? Uh, like right. a dangling thing, dangling. Maybe like, okay. Yeah. But now the young generation, even though it's a different country like Japan, China, and then right. since the internet and the website, okay. the young one became international and fashion became international. So okay. even though in the Middle East they don't wear anymore the Middle Eastern, they wanted also what's going on in the whole world. So things have well, changed. Saying, you don't design anymore for, for a region, certain. But so now the, the, the taste is much more globalized. Yeah, globalized. So it's like what you think for, of Japanese, let's say, they would wear small ears. Right. Now the young ones, since they've been on the website and looking at all over the world what okay. fashion looks, even the, the Japanese wear big earrings now. So fashion became not. Um, regionalized, it became international and globalized. Everybody were almost the same. Thanks Instagram. Huh? Huh? Thank you Instagram. Instagram is where you can see all these pictures. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the taste has really been yeah. become much more globalized and so you yeah. can't really see the, the sort of... Um, Even the people in the Middle East or in Asia, they almost like almost every, the same thing all over the world. Because it's the new what generation. What about the Europeans? Same thing? The European are we like, uh, we don't have many serious? clients. That's unbelievable. And they, I tell you why, because the European like to wear status, really? name, okay. like uh, Chanel, really? Vuitton, yeah. They buy one piece, a status, but not, they're not so impulsive in buying lots of fashion jewelry. They buy more of a brand name really? and uh, and even I'm a bit different from that. I'm European, but I'm a bit different from that. Why are you different? Yeah. Probably because I go to trade shows and I. No, but you it's all difficult to resist temptation so sometimes. Not every woman is the same. Yeah. But the shops are afraid to try because also they don't get that oh. in France, they can't in England. Okay. And Germany is not the best. Like they're afraid to invest in something they don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone, so the German woman would be more bold, they would experiment with custom jewelry. German women. German women like their, their jewelry. Yeah. It's the British and the English, very the English and the French are very, very afraid. But they just want to buy gold, gold. 
Yeah, like, and they invest, invest the stores, the shop. I don't know about the public, right. but the shops are invest, don't want to invest to yeah. buy for their public. I see. Yeah. I see. They don't buy it, the public won't buy it. Okay. Well, of course, because it's never displayed. So <laughs> display. the, 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 the public what, what happens is that there, like we get a lot of, I, like our biggest clicks or whatever the, you know, when we check the data on the outnet or the yeah. Reporter, I was thinking that most customers are from Great Britain. They buy English women buy our jewelry on Netaporte more so than any other place. Netaporte is from the UK. It's I know, but yeah. yeah. For some reason, the British women because they cannot find it. Ah, I see, shop, I see what you mean. So this is the only outlet to actually being able to find it. Yeah, you. because the store don't take so a chance. So they like us because of the Instagram or the website. And or if the I magazine. remember well, you were saying that Netaporte buys. I mean, it, like they buy stock. It's not like uh, it's right. on consignment. So, right. you, it's, uh, right. yeah. so they do take a chance. Yeah, they do take a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Take a chance. Well, that's know. fantastic. Thank God they're around. Yeah. Right. Uh, they, they still they still stock your area. Yeah. Because you still have Today we just saw the buyer. Uh, good. Very good for you. Fingers crossed. Um. So. Thanks for clarifying this about the aesthetics. You know, I, I really thought there were some massive differences between uh, countries and uh, cultures. So, in terms of the materials used, I remember um, when I first met you and I, del I visited your delightful workshop in New York in the garment district. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, Do you know yeah, why I said that? Because we um, just for uh, the record, I met Regina and uh, so, uh, uh, Isaac I'm... and Regina's son Ben Manevitz, who is also a lawyer like myself. Um, at the um, Fashion Law Bootcamp back in May 2012 when I went to Fordham School of Law uh, and therefore to New York uh, for uh, two or three weeks and I um, attended that, uh, that great um, two weeks uh, seminar uh, organized by uh, Susan Scafidi. Six weeks. Six weeks. Okay, right. I stayed six weeks in the US. Uh -huh. Did I? Okay, well, Maybe. and so, and so, um, and you do? I'm correct. <laughs> Because <laughs> I had to go there. To right, <laughs> Regina. Yeah. Regina very kindly invited me with some other girls from the uh, from the fashion Law bootcamp to uh, to Isaac and Regina's uh, um, workshop and factory in uh, in the garment district. And I said to those girls just before, we, uh, just when we were about to actually go on the on the on the elevator on the left, I said. I will go in there and I promise that I will not buy one piece of jewelry <laughs> that came out. <laughs> I have won three or four. I just could not resist. So anyway, I think um, you can you, you, you can have the idea of uh, the temptations which are in existence in that yeah. wonderful uh, Charlie Wonka's factory, but not for chocolate, but for uh, custom jewelry. Yeah. So yeah, so coming back to my point, when I, I visited the, uh, the, the the factory, the workshop at the time, uh, you were explaining to me that when you came to the US, you couldn't um, be quite afford buying, uh, uh, you know, uh, gold or, uh, rocks or like, you know, gold uh, and also yeah. diamonds and stuff like that. So if you prefer those, and you prefer to experiment, as you yeah. were saying before, with um, unusual material. Uh, material like plastic or, or wood, so, um, did you, did, 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 is that, is, is that um, still your sort of DNA of the Benamood brand, but you, you prefer to still be in an experimental phase and keep, uh, keep it light with the custom jewelry, or, or is, do you want to evolve towards more fine jewelry, for example? I'm sure you've heard of Delphina Deletrez, who is one of the daughter of the um, Fendi sisters. And so she's founded a brand, initially she was doing mostly custom jewelry, and now she's gone really, really, like almost 80% to fine jewelry. Is that not something that would be appealing no, to you? No, it's not my DNA, because in uh, fashion jewelry you can create an experiment and be bold, okay. create, experiment, be bolder. Right. And uh, the, the real jewelry, it's nice, it's expensive, but sometimes you are limited to the creativity also. You uh, are. Yeah. Well, unless you are making very expensive. Unless you make it for thousands of dollars. Really? Yeah, and it become forbidden to the to the well, fashion people. Well, custom jewelry, yeah, this, I would it's, it's it's sell price. retail for up to twelve, fifteen hundred dollars US dollars. I'm sorry? Our pieces retail, but I'm on retail, can retail at twelve hundred, thirteen hundred US dollars. As is. As is. It's the custom jewelry cost one thousand three hundred. Retail. In, 
Buy that is a lot. I mean, for the most expensive pieces, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, imagine if you made this in gold, it yeah. would be like hundred and thirty thousand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how many customers? Yeah. What, what, what do you sell at one thousand three hundred US dollars? Like which pieces? Um, a big uh, one that requires, even though it's custom jewelry, and because we, as it works, it does delivers very good quality. We have top-notch workers. And material, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, is it like a necklace or is a it a necklace? A necklace. A necklace. A necklace. A necklace. Okay. Yeah. What does it look like at one, one this price point? It looks fabulous. I'm sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> is it with rocks? No, the gold <laughs> bit that you saw in the display. Okay. The gold discs. The, lo the gold, like... Um, Byzantine, like... like. No, like the, one, the gold one all go like linked together. Okay. And ah, the chevalier. Right. Like a chevalier ah. necklace. Wow, chevalier like necklace. Like yeah. About $600 wholesale. Right, right, right. $1,500. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's a lot of work. It's a physical work. I'm sure. I, well, I mean, I'm not saying... it's casting jewelry. Yeah. It's a statement and uh, have to it do will it. last you for a long time, so you get your money. On. No, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. So, okay, so it is not the strategy of, of Benamoon to go at some point in fine jewelry because it's a completely different market. No, we have different price. We start from uh, under $50 right to $1,000. To, yeah. so. to be fairly honest, as soon as Delphine and Deletres started to go on fine jewelry, mostly fine jewelry, I stopped being a customer. No I, I money want can come. Well, I mean, yeah, you, I mean, do you really want to spend two grand on a, on, on a small ring? That is also very sensitive, you know, very sensitive because I had to have it repaired once. Yeah. So, so um, no, I'm not going to spend two grand on a, but on a ring. But, you know, somebody like that. Well, I mean, ex except because my wedding like ring or something. Fendi's, Fendi family. Yeah. She, she's riding on the name. I didn't buy her because of Fendi. I mean, there's many people who sell two thousand dollar diamond rings. It's uh, many real jewelry. Like right. if you walk the show, you see. There's, you know, it's expensive. But the gold is expensive. The work is expensive, and the look from is very cute, very personal. You buy something because it's personal, because you love it. Yeah. You could buy it from a big Biderman. You can buy it from many others. The same ring, kind of. Uh, with the diamonds. Is it uh, Biderman? Maria Biderman. Okay. She another one. Does she make diamonds? She makes diamonds also. Yeah, I think I heard about that. But, she has uh, shafts in Paris. Does she? Yeah, and What's her name again? Maria Biderman. Did you have to adjust the materials that you are uh, using or you were using in order to comply with, in particular, EU regulations? I mean, I know you yeah. clarified that your market is not particularly European, but Nonetheless, you know, in terms of, I remember when you, I was in contact with Alex and Annie, and, and then I, but you kindly introduced me to when uh, in a trade show, I think it was in Who's Next a long time ago. And uh, then I went to buy some of a uh, little stuff from my grandmother's, and then said, Yeah, but uh, there's a lead content, in, you know, and in, if you were in Europe, you couldn't sell this because the lead is too high. So I said that to my grandmother's, and the one said, I'm never going to wear it because there's too much lead in it, and I don't want to die. She was like 90 years old. <laughs> and the other one was wearing it constantly because she says, well, you have to die about something. Anyway. So I, I understood that basically customers in Europe um, are kind of, you know, quite reluctant to wear stuff which might actually affect but, uh, their skin. That became so all over the world. Became no, nobody. Became a lot. Nickel free. Nickel free. Lead okay. free. Lead free and nickel free. Nickel, okay. And nickel that, free is in Europe and right. lead free is in the States. Is in the States. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And nickel also. No. And now, so we did, uh, I mean, from a chemical standpoint, yes, we basically now buy lead free material to make Lead free and, and, and we flake nickel free, free too. So you buy net free, net free material from Definitely, the whole of the world, yeah. All right? So we don't have any issues because it just doesn't like, like the metal. It melts, it becomes like a mass of liquid. Right. I wouldn't be able to tell which one is with lead and which one's not unless I go through the testing for each piece of jewelry, which would be really good. Okay. okay. So we just yeah. buy lead, lead free and nickel and uh, plate nickel free. So that way. You are like super above the standards and well, therefore you I'm are yeah. super above, compliant. Above exactly. And I don't have to worry about now. What's it like in the like, uh, South of Far East and the Middle East? Do they have any regulations or they don't care? They don't have regulations. But really? we already adjusted to the regulations. Thanks to the European and the US. It's crazy. Yeah, we do our standards. Right. The point is that um, 
they don't have legal regulations, but the stores we sell the Harvey Nichols in Dubai, Qatar, or whatever, yeah. they cater to very high-end clients. Right, right, right. So those clients travel, so they know about the lead okay. yeah. So I don't think they ever ask, and they don't test. But it would be stupid of us to of not do it, not provide them lead free and they could Your reputation would really take you down. Yeah, yeah anyway, we reputation. already changed well, the material, exactly. so, so it's for everybody. Absolutely. No, but it's, it's quite interesting to see that in certain continents, when territories, they would not think about protecting their own, you know, people. Yeah, well, just, yeah. yeah. But I think they overdid it in the States with the lead free and Really? Do you think it's even more stringent in the US, the regulation? Yeah, the lead Europe? free in California, the proposition ah. or something. Ah, they because it's, it's state regulated, it's like state, state by state, yeah. it's not yeah. even at the federal level. Oh my gosh. But they you know, they, they, they claim that put... children eat the jewelry. Ah, but they just like chew it. Suck on it. And they, they might have a point, you know. But, but, I mean, what, do you... but what mother would allow? It's, it's even worse because if the child is going to chew your ear, yeah. you have stones, never mind the lead. Yeah. The crystal, you die from the crystal. Anyway, you, your pieces are not for kids, so. They're not for kids, but God forbid the mother is wearing ear and holding the baby and they, and they start right. chewing. And they, she shouldn't be chewing, you know, she should feel it and remove, sure. you know, like, remove the child from that like, moment. From this moment, like, yeah. like you know, if the child touches the fire, you remove it from the fire. It's a bit weird, yeah, okay, yeah. But because if he swallows the stone, it's worse because he can choke. Of course, yeah. my gosh. Yes. And then you cannot sue me because he swallowed the stone, you know, like, I can't be responsible for the stone. Also, uh, yeah. but you know what, Swarovski, you use Swarovski stones? You do. And Swarovski, until today, the, in order for it to shine the way it shines, in con, con, counter, the counter has lead. Okay. The glass crystal. has lead, the crystal, the crystal has lead. Every crystal. Did they change that? Or is it still Not yet. Okay. They got special permission from all the governments in the world. I see. To, they have certain Because Swarovski definitely sold in Europe, so yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Really? And, and they, so they, still they have allow stone. lead for Swarovski yeah. stones only, not for the frame, but for the oh, stone right. itself. Interesting. So they're trying to develop a new stone and they're uh -huh. trying very hard and trying to sell it. But so ugly, it doesn't have any shine, any crystal in it. That's interesting. So Swarovski does, it makes its own jewels, but then it sells as a wholesaler. Yes. It sells this, it, it's, it's rocks to um, no, other the, 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 the component, the crystal, right, uh, the this, crystal. The only, the only reason I know about Swarovski was I buy stones from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, never yeah. bought jewelry from them. I didn't know they have jewelry until I saw shops. And I and know, they do, they do. They do I have jewelry. Yeah. And so they, I see them also at Maison Yorgia because they do a lot of, it's called the Atelier Swarovski where they do a lot of uh, design pieces. Okay, so that's, that's good. And for all of uh, uh, the uh, present and uh, future yes, customers yes. of Benamoon, they are completely above par in terms of being compliant with over regulations yes, of lead yes. and, yes. and, uh, and iron and everything. So I remember um, when we were in contact uh, um, uh, about on that topic a few years ago, there, I, I, um, about you know trying to find some retailers in Europe. There was this whole this whole pilava about shipping costs in the US, like from the US, etc. So, um, if, and I was wondering when I was looking go, going through playing with your website earlier today, is it possible now to go on the Benamoon website, order a piece, and then have it delivered in France of the UK? And, Absolutely. Okay. DHL, UPS. And okay. And is it easier now compared to a few years ago? Absolutely, to, it's very easy. It was ridiculous. I don't know when we're talking. So what, what, what was going on at the I time? I don't understand because when we were talking, you and I, yeah, and you were supposed to, you know, we were working. At the net, the e-commerce people that we were referring to, I don't remember the name. Like yeah, the people who were in the process of. Do you know what? They, di they died now. They, they died they, now. They, 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 they were so the contracts were absolutely confusing and ridiculous. Yeah, but that, you send me one of the contracts, it was just ridiculous, and there was nothing. They wanted to do drop shit. They wanted at that time. They wanted. They, let's say they would. They did not want to stack the goods. They wanted right. me to stack the goods, and every time they get an order, they would send the order to I me. See. I have to ship each individual order to each individual customer all over the world, which is fine. I can do that. But then the issue was who's going to pay for the shipping because shipping right. to the US is five dollars, shipping to France is fifty dollars. I see. Or whatever the number is. So it, sometimes it doesn't pay to buy from the US yeah. to ship to England because the cost of the shipping is half the cost of the earring okay. in our case. If I it see was a $5,000 item, gold yeah. item, then $50 yeah. is not a big deal. Yeah. But if it's a $120 item and $50 for shipping, then it's ridiculous. Yeah. So 
right now, um, actually, everybody calm down, and even when we have Amazon. There was a big consolidation in any case in this e-tailers um, sphere. I don't know if you noticed, but there used to be quite a lot of smaller players like right. Maritime, etc. They all died, or they got acquired. Um, so now you've got the, the likes of net porte probably Farfetch as well is going to be there for a long time because they, they just did an IPO last week. And you also have um, uh, My Teresa and, and, you know, more or less... My Teresa is owned by Nima Marcus. Okay, right, interesting. Also, it's been bought by Nima And you've got Matches.com as well. Um, right, those three, Farfetch, Yeah, and that's right, so it's really consolidated. And you have net and, yeah, and, and America have yeah. bought Operandi and Shabba. Those are the uh, that's it. You see, so lots of the other smaller players, they all died yeah, anyway, right. because that, right. that is a winner-take-all economy, especially in the uh, tech, tech sector anyway, so... And because there was too many. Yeah. You couldn't advertise all of them, and okay. the consumer couldn't look at all of them. Mm. Right now, like only the strongest survived. Yeah, and yeah. The, one like most the, love the jungle. And it's yeah. the same thing, like like the bloggers now. We have million bloggers, and they all start off, and they yeah, all. Yeah, you like, mentioned the bloggers. You were doing some stuff oh with bloggers. Gosh, there are millions of them, and then okay. only you know, like there was the. Men Repeller, the first one. Oh, yeah, Men Repeller is, is quite famous. She is quite famous. And then you working with her? No, no, because she. No, not her. No, okay. I don't work with her. Okay. But there's others like major ones and everybody wants to be like them. But it's like also the hype is over, you know, it's like the yeah. blood is still good for the Instagram, but the hype in itself, like they, they, some of them require thousands of dollars to work with them. Like I got it. They all want, like I get it now because we became more popular on yeah. our internet, you know, our but not only, not only on Instagram, I mean, you're already quite strong. You have a good placement service where a lot of your um, pieces are being, um, you know, featuring in, featuring in photo shoots yeah. which are on the cover of Vogue or yeah. Marie Claire or Elle. Right, all over so, the world. Actually. Yeah, so you've got some PR people working for you, you do it in-house. Actually, house. it's in-house. So they call you and they say, we need yeah. these pieces, la di da Right, yeah. because like one, I guess one thing about the other, also because the, there's so much so much of big collection, we don't stick to one look. So every style. I'm sorry, what? We do not stick to one look. Okay, not so sure. One's it's very versatile. One, one, one is doing Arabic, so we're okay here. Oh. One is doing prairie look, so you have the social group. Prairie look? What the heck is prairie look? <laughs> like country, like. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Indian, Americana stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Then you have uh, Byzantine, okay. You know, we got yeah, the, sure. You want a deco, you want, you know, up, down, up, down, up, or something. Yeah, exactly. We, we are so yeah. versatile. Versatile, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. style is actually love us. They, they call us. Uh, Believe me, sometimes like I said, please stop calling me. No, it's good for you, you know, to I be on the cover. I'm always so servicing It's fantastic. Nice. I mean, yeah. and you know, whenever I have a journalist who calls me to uh, interview me about something, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'm available. It's right, exactly. That's, no, we always do that. We always accommodate. We're always very nice to them. Uh -huh. And, you know, we actually now have in a position, luckily, where we choose to lend the jewel. We don't lend to everyone. Before we used to lend to many, okay. just anyone, but now we kind of choose and if it's somebody that we may not like their publication. Okay. So, that, 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 and so right. now you even have this new source because this is fantastic, you know, for the millennials and stuff. You also have all these bloggers, which is a new source of PR, and they are approaching you to do this work with them. Right, yeah. So, so the the man Rafaela, who is quite famous, and so yeah, she, she wants to be paid for it, right? But, that, uh, but you know what? She's, uh, and she's tied in with some other oh, okay. friends. So okay. She asks if she can do it. Right. She okay. does it for money or. And I'm not willing to pay the thousands and thousands yeah. of dollars. I don't think they're worth it. I don't think the clicks are worth it. I mean, yeah. not that I, I don't... You don't think the clicks are working? Would you worth it. Worth the money worth they ask you. Okay. Like, I got one more... So you've got some bloggers who actually come to you and say, okay, you need you need to pay me blah, 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 some money, and then I'll do you some publicity. Yeah, 5,000 per post. If you want a three post, 12,000. I give you this gun. And they give me a, a, like a menu. Of find it counterproductive. I've not seen yet the benefits. I mean, I know that there are benefits, but people do recognize when I'm on, they see it. And like you yourself said that you like it. Mm. But I have not seen any purchases yet. Or trans I see. Translating to money. Well, money. you know, well, yes, but those are aspirational buyers. Probably right now, this girls in their foot, you know, in their teens or up to their early 20s, maybe they can't afford it quite yet, but when they're in their late 20s, 30s, then maybe. they will. Well, as long as they know it, that's good. But, uh, you know, our jewelry, you can buy, you can buy like 100, 120 dollars, you can yeah. start buying. Yeah, that's babysitting money. <laughs> right, so at that point, yeah, you, it's yeah. babysitting money. So if they really want it, they yeah, yeah. But our 
they cater to 25 and up. They don't cater to the teens. Uh, well, who knows? Uh, okay, so so that is definitely an area uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, take but care we, of. We are talking to bladders. We're doing yeah. a lot of work now. I actually have on staff a photographer, a back end person, a digital person. Yeah, and as you were a, saying, yeah, and a stylist. Yeah. Slash in the house, everything. So how many how many pictures do you post on Instagram, say for on, in one week? Or well, they're supposed to post about two a day. But two a day was so cool. That's fantastic. Well, yeah. but they don't always do it. So. Wow, also, it's a good decision. We create yeah. a calendar and we tell them back a September, calendar by September 15. You have to you know, because we have so many groups, so you have, to, you, photo have to you have to photograph. You That's have to fantastic. edit. You have to you know, Photoshop. Yeah. You have to hire the model for free. The what? The model for free. <laughs> yeah, we have to hire a model. We have to a model, a right, right, right. Model. We have to go get the clothes for the model. You know, model clothes, oh, yeah. buy clothes. Okay, okay. And then we have to create it's the a whole group. process. It's, it's a whole process. process. Yeah, but this is really great. I mean, it's a styling process. process. Yeah, and we have it's, it's young you, women. You all do it in house. In yeah. house. Young women do it, and I get involved, and my sales director gets involved. In this. So do you pay them in trade or what? When you say you the bloggers right now, they haven't asked. None of the models. The models? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah they ask for a piece of jewelry, but yeah. many of them are very happy to because they also get the free picture. Oh, for, for, for their portfolio, for books. books. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they're happy to do that because. So you're in contact say. with like modeling agencies for this? I have, uh, yeah, there's one or two. That it's so cool and to be in the garment district in New York. In the, you're like really in the center of things. You've got all these booking agencies to not too far. All these photographers yeah, I, I around. I've never really been good. to an office. It's all by email. Yeah, yeah, but nonetheless, you know, I mean, this, this is where all the big modeling agencies are and photographers. Right, but the big models don't give us. They don't, you know, it's the newer models that they need the logos. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it's they not directly that, to you. It's not you. demand coming okay. to me. But they, they benefit from an association of benefits. Yeah, because they, they can build their portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. Like Which one little mother, her mother said that, okay, you'll give me some jewelry because she's going to participate in a beauty contest. Okay. And she, for the beauty contest, they, they not only do the bathing suits, but they do some sort of a <laughs> resort uh, wear or okay. something. And okay. she needed something to to emphasize the rip, so she like got some clothes. Right. And she wants some jewelry to dress up like a Sta like a statement jewelry yeah, to statement, make it look yeah. like she's in so, so you know like I would lend her the jewelry for yeah, the day right. the contest so she's happy it's sold the butter, butter agreement right yeah so that's smart just to finish to wrap this up how do you see the uh, the future of custom jewelry evolving you seem to be quite bullish uh, Isaac earlier in the trade in the custom, podcast jewelry is here to stay because yeah. women always like jewelry for sure so the ancient from prehistoric women love jewelry <laughs> And as long as they're really? women, they're gonna, we're going to have people love jewelry. And jewelry is something that uh, it's, a, it's a compliment to, to your outfit, yeah. to the way you feel, to give you, put you in a mood. So jewelry is here to stay. And the more the better. Do you think that the, po the policy of uh, the US government at the moment is supporting business owners like yourself? Are you... Are you, I mean, yeah. you know, aside from all the, uh, the pathos and the craziness of your, your president, but do you think that this is a, a government which is which has a good firm hand, handle on, you know, business, business uh, yes, issues yes, and they from a tax standpoint, they for example, or labor law standpoint, they yeah, make it they, easy for they, you? Yeah, or? very easy. Okay. They encourage okay. American product, they encourage okay. producing in America to to increase the hiring more labor. But what about They're protectionist measures, like for China? Is that an issue for you, for example? Or? No, it's not an issue for yeah, us okay. because uh, we produce in America and that's right. better, good for us. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I see what you mean. You're not producing no, anything. No, 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 no. But it creates a problem shipping to China. That's oh, is it? Yeah, Has it increased the prices? Double to them. Jeez. I mean, China just. Because of those protectionist measures? Right. And they used to uh, be 40, they used to have 40% duty to receive goods that they went How to 60. Much? 
four zero, four zero. and it's now six zero, sixty percent. To bring in goods, it's our crazy. Goods you, you, you better off just ship, go, go, traveling to the US and buying the stuff in there and putting everything in your suitcase. But then you'll go to customs to buy a lot. <laughs> well, yeah, it needs to be in small quantities, obviously. Yeah. Okay. But so also, maybe that. they don't give them a visa to come to the United States. They easy to do. I see. So, true, true. no, but uh, the, okay. so the government is yeah. doing a good job okay. for the American producer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So you, you, you're pretty confident that this yeah, is a, yeah. a strong business model yeah. here to stay. Yeah. Well, you've been going for 35 years, so well, <laughs> you already have a historical data. I would to our Trump. I don't know. I would no, that, no, I would. Yeah. As I said, aside from the pathos and all the um, you know the craziness of um, um, the streets and whatever, but you know more like on the proper fiscal and business measures and legal measures. So, well, he did you know he did pass the health uh, uh, health bill, which I mean you should get credit for. What is what is this? Health bill. The health like health bill. Yeah, that's no, it. Right. If he um, avoided Obamacare. Yeah, avoid Obamacare and uh, do you think that's a good thing? I don't know if it was a good thing, but it's going to lead to some kind of a wake up call to the insurance companies. Where they, because they were going nuts with the prices. Oh, you mean because that the, the health cover was being paid by the companies? By private people like us. Ah, for your, for your staff? Anyone who, like, it was wonderful to impose on everyone to be insured. Yes, but who was going to pay for it? Right, not the government. But I thought it was the taxpayers who would be Obamacare. Well, taxpayers who made certain amount of money. So let's uh, let's for in my in our case, yeah, I had a health plan for my employees, and we are sharing expenses in paying for the health plan. As soon as my care went into effect, um, many of the, so like many of them had to go, even though the, like we had to. What do you mean you had to go? My, the health plan went up. Okay. From let's say four hundred dollars a month. How much? We also pay four hundred dollars a month per person. Four hundred. Four. Four hundred dollars. Okay. For a health plan for okay. each employee. Okay. The minute Obama here went into effect, yes, I had I had to pay eight hundred dollars. Like double. Double. Right. So now I had went to the employer. I said, I can't afford to pay for that small company. Yes. Eight hundred times twenty-five. So you had to twenty-five thousand dollars a month times twelve. That's for a million dollars, I can't do it. So you, you have, have to basically to restructure your stuff. So I have to, you have to pay a certain amount of money to give me the help that you need. So they all came off the health plan. And so how, so they don't have any health plan anymore? Some have. Some went, some went on Obamacare and they pay from their own pocket. Jesus. And whatever they pay. And some just don't have because it, one man told me, it, it's cheaper to pay the fine for not being on a health for the fine to not on a health plan at the end of the year. You have to show that you have insurance. Well, as a person, as a person, you, you, otherwise you get fined. You get yeah. fined. You get fined if you're not. But so, this is when you are in employment, right? Right. If you are employed, you're employed. If you are employed by Namun, you you obliged to have a health plan according to Obamacare. If you so if you want Obama, so either you pay Obamacare or you pay the employee partial payment. Right, right. You as employee have a choice. If you don't want to do it because you, you find it too expensive, because this is America, so you do have a choice, then you get fined at the end of the year. So when you say you, what, well, the employee. The employee. Oh my gosh, fine. so they, they lose every... They lose each way. Yeah, so they get fined, let's say, $2,000 a year for not being on the health plan. So... And what and does the uh, employer get fined yeah. as well? Employee also five thousand dollars a year per per yeah. employee per employee, and that's still cheaper than than having him employed. On that's that crazy. Employee. And so, what has the new U.S. law changed? To now, that, first of all, the employee doesn't get fined. He has a choice of being on a health plan or not being on a health plan. Okay. And the insurance companies, they think the rates did not go down completely. Okay. But they found that. Before they were like a monopoly, like they knew that you have to be okay, uh, like you have no choice. Now so they, they have to fight up the prices. They hide up the prices. Now they, you know, they fight for business. business. They fight for business. They back into business of doing business. So with time, we're going to see the rates go down. Yeah, I think it would be nice for your employees if, if you were including yeah. the, uh, the the health plan. It would be very nice, yeah. but if it, it has to be 
subsidized. It has to be paid by someone. Right. In a small company, when you, your value doesn't allow for four of a million dollars for health plan, because yeah. you have other expenses besides the health plan. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's. Um, it was working in France. I mean, I, 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 I don't really know because I've got my own business. But what I can tell you, for example, is that personally, I on, and for a very, 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 very good health cover, I pay, um, and it's quite expensive actually. I pay around one hundred US dollars, like the and euros, the equivalent of one hundred US dollars for an extremely good health cover. A month or a week. yeah, a month. That's month. very cheap. That's very cheap, and it's 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 very actually compared to. Rates here in France is quite expensive for one person, not a family, paying right. around 100 uh, well, euros per month is quite expensive. It's very, it's a yeah. you have the US system. is, is it's really it's something. Yeah. Somebody, somebody needs to rehaul this, you have yeah. to fix it. I don't really know how to fix it yeah. so, because there's too much involved with the insurance company, they're making too much money right. and they sure. don't allow any changes. Okay. Okay, so but that back for you is is a, is a plus for that the government this this particular government has put in place. Well, what is plus or not? The employees are not happy not to have health insurance. Right. But uh, money wise, there's nothing we can do. At least we're not fine anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I think that's a wrap. Thank you so much, Thank Isaac you. and Regina. And it was uh, a pleasure talking to you, as you usual. Thank you, likewise. I hope you guys And I hope I was able to give you some good uh, Absolutely. information. Absolutely, both and, of you, uh, yeah. And I, I, I wish you, you know, uh, plenty of many, many more years doing this, because you really both enjoy it. Thank you, And then you, you've got yeah. your your three or four trips a year to, uh, <laughs> to Paris and other places which are exotic. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to our podcast Lawfully Creative produced by Crefermi Studios. Subscribe to our podcast or catch up with our original shows on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, CastBox, TuneIn, Breaker, Radio Public, Anchor, Pocket Casts, the American Bar Association Journal, Player FM, iHeartRadio, and Overcast. Please do leave a review and rating about our podcast to encourage others to discover our curated content.